Good morning, everybody. Today is November the 17th, 2016, a Thursday. And what do we do on Thursdays? Technical Thursdays. We talk about technique and how it's going to improve your golf game. And what I want to talk about today is pitching. And this is an area that a lot of amateurs struggle with. And the question I get asked the most is, you know, how do I control my distances? When I have a pitch shot and I have a 40 yard or 50 yard or 60 yard pitch shot, I tend to hit it too hard or too soft and I never quite know how hard to hit it. How do I control my pitching distances? Well, if you don't, if you practice a lot, like the tour pros, they can look like a basketball player shooting hoops. He, they can look at the flag and instinctively know how hard to hit it. It's what we call feel. But the amateurs that don't practice a lot, feel is something you develop. So if you don't have the feel, you need something a little bit more mechanical. So this is something I teach in the golf school to most of the amateurs, and it's a guaranteed way of controlling your distances. And because I don't get to practice very much, when I go out and play, I use exactly the same system. So I have my four wedges. I have a 60 degree lob wedge, a 56 degree sand wedge, a 52 degree gap wedge, and a 48 degree pitching wedge. I try and keep all my clubs through my bag at about a four degree gap. That allows me about a 10 yard gap between all my shots with a full swing. I will use my lob wedge for my pitch shots most of the time. Why? Because it's going to give me the most amount of height and obviously if I can get it up high it's going to give me quick stop as the ball's not going to roll very far and if I don't have to calculate roll I'm going to be much more accurate. You'll notice when the players play a golf course like the US Open or the British Open where the greens are intentionally made firm and they have to calculate how far the ball rolls the shot's a little more difficult for them to get close to the hole. If it's been raining, if you get any golf course that's soft, it's like throwing darts. The pros know exactly how far they hit the ball in the air. So what I'm going to show you here is how to control your air time. And I'm going to, first of all, take my lob wedge. Ball position about two inches inside my lead heel. Stance slightly open. I'm going to pull my front foot back and flare the toe open. That's going to preset my hips a little open at address. My shoulders are still square to the target, but my hips are slightly open. And I'm going to come back in a minute and explain why this is important. The very final thing that you want to do is lean forward so that I have most of my weight on my front foot. I've got hardly any weight on this back foot. And you can see when I lean forward, I'm also going to get a little bit more forward shaft lean. That's going to help me make sure I hit the ball first. If I hit the ball first and compress the ball, I'm going to get a little bit more spin. From there, in order to control my distances, I'm going to use a clock system. So imagine a big clock here in front of me. And so here, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10, 11, and then on this side here, uh, 7, 8, 9, or, or sorry, the, the other way. It's going to be 5, 4, 3, 2. So what I want here is to practice, and for most of you, the best place to start is 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock. So if, you if I take it back, to nine o'clock with my arm, not the shaft. You can see I've got about a 90 degree wrist hinge, and then I swing through to about three o'clock on this side. That's gonna give me a specific distance. Now that distance is gonna vary from person to person. So I'm not telling you how far. You have to go and hit these shots and figure out how far your seven o'clock shot goes, your eight o'clock, your nine o'clock, your 10 o'clock. I'm suggesting start with a nine because the seven's actually a little more difficult to do as you'll see later on. So if I swing back to nine and through to three, I'm trying to maintain the length of my left arm so that my bottom of my arc is exactly the same place all the time. So if I hit a nine o'clock to three o'clock shot, that ball is gonna go in the air about 50 yards for me. That means that my 
eight o'clock shot. That is going to go about 40 yards for me and then my seven o'clock will obviously go 30 yards. The seven o'clock is a little more difficult and I'll tell you why because what most people tend to do when they get to seven o'clock is they flip it with their arms. You still got to control this with your body rotation and that's why you stand with the stance open and preset the hips because once I set, when I turn I've only got a small movement to get my hips out of the way. So this, this setup actually helps and that one's going to go about 30 yards. If I wanted it to go, so 30, 40, 50 is my 7, 8, 9. If I wanted to go 60, then I would swing to 10 o'clock. So I go back to there, and that one will go about 60 yards. If I want the ball to go a little further, if I wanted to go 70, now I've got to change clubs. So now, if I take my 56 degree sand wedge, that's four degrees less loft than my lob wedge, it's gonna take the ball 10 yards further. So if I swing this to 10, it's gonna go 70. If I swing my gap wedge to 10 o'clock, it's gonna go 80. If I swing my pitching wedge to 10 o'clock, it's gonna go 90. If I have 100, for me, back to my lob wedge, full swing. So now, at 100 yards, I'm going to make my normal stance, weight even, make my normal swing. That ball is going to go about 100. My sand wedge is going to go 110. My gap wedge is going to go 120. My pitching wedge is going to go 130. And then I'm going to add 10 yards for my 9, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, and all the way through. So right from 30 yards to 130 yards, these three clubs cover that 100 yards. So, I, depending, so when I'm trying to lay up, I don't lay up to, oh, I wanna, I wanna lay it up at 100 yards so I can have a full swing. I know I'm gonna get, you know, if I lay it up to 50, and, and I know I can hit a nine o'clock shot and get it close because I'm using my lob wedge, you know, I'm still going to get the spin that I want. So, create a scale that is similar to what I've just explained. Create that scale for yourself with your 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock for these three, and then a 10 o'clock sand wedge, a 10 o'clock gap wedge, and a 10 o'clock pitching wedge. And then your full swing, lob wedge, sand wedge, gap wedge, and pitching wedge. That should give you a really good scale that when you're on the golf course and you've got a 60 yard shot, when I'm on the golf course and I have a 60 yard shot, I know that's my 10 o'clock lob wedge. Now, if it's a windy day and I want to keep the ball down a little bit, I can go to a nine o'clock sand wedge. Four degrees less loft, one o'clock less, I'm still gonna get the 60 yards. So I can keep the, the flight down a little bit. So teach yourself these shots and I promise you, not only will your pitching improve, but because you're getting a good body rotation and a good extension, your full swing is gonna improve as well. Try it. <laughs>